So shouldn't the leaders in that region be worried that that is the perception Mr. President has of, you know, their leadership so far? Then read the papers and see the reactions from them. It's not, it's not, it's not conciliatory at all. And it's not Mr. President's fault. People will tell you because he's a military man. We're in a democracy. They tell you he's a military man, yes. But there are issues too that they need the political class need to take certain decisions under. The president doesn't write his speech, does he? But I'm sure he would read it before he... Of course he will read it. He, he must the read it before. And then the areas where he's not comfortable with, you know, I'm sure he, he can tell them to adjust the it. The trouble, the mm -hmm. people causing the trouble are people around government. At times I sit down and I ask, is that fair? Is there I mean, meeting? Consider, sorry, Mr. Joffo, is that fair considering the fact that at the end of the day, it's the president's speech. Yes. He's going to deliver that speech. Sure. Sure. And he would bear responsibility for whatever comes exactly. out of it. So can we really then say, oh, it's not Mr. President's fault, it's the people around him. If he is drawing from his experience here, and he says very categorically, he didn't say government, he didn't say the Nigerian government no, no, or my no, no, party. No. He says, no. I am very disappointed. That is his, his personal feeling, isn't it? Yes. That is, that is Mr. President speaking. But what I'm telling you that, the, the advisors should have been in a position to reframe that word, uh, the, that sentence, conveying the same meaning. We, we do not distract, we will not take anything out from it if you rephrase that uh, this thing. Well, but you looking know, at that, because if, if, you, if you say then that, you, you know, the, 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 the advisors should have been able to rephrase it, would you then still, would, would it take away, I mean, is it a matter of how it was said or the it, fact it, that he said it, it was at said all? matters a great deal. If I come here and say, don't be silly, it's different from coming, you are stupid. We're saying, but Some people still convincing. take offense that don't be silly. You, you know that. Even though it's supposed because to be a, a milder level reprimand. Of understanding. But it's just an advice. But you know, in the, a leader a, of a very complex society like Nigeria, Nigeria is very complex. And to manage, Nigerians are the easiest people to manage. And our media is not even helping matters. You see, the same story, it will be given different interpretation. If you look at this, you say restructure now or implode. You see other uh, uh, headlines mm. saying Mr. President says Igbo should go to hell. You know? So we should also mind, look at what we present to the public because it shapes the people's opinion. Now everybody has a role to play. Yes. The media. We are going into election. INEC had just announced a date for election in 2018. Just watch out. But the media, need, they have a very great role to play in moderating the temperature in the polity. So they should, they, uh, maybe uh, the, the security agency should have a parley with the editors and say, there are certain things people should not be writing. Out of mischief, you see some people pick provocative headlines that is capable of inflaming passions. Mm -hmm. So we, we should guide against them. But you know, like electronic, electronic media, I am responsible for what I'm saying. You are watching me. And so I also be very careful in choice of words, because I know I'm being watched. Mm. But for the print media, anything goes. I'm just wondering, though, I mean, it's very, when you see that for one day of the year, we're able to set aside whatever differences we have, whatever complaints we have. Yes, we know that, you know, things are not well, as well as we would like. And we're able to set that aside for one day and just be grateful for the fact that we're Nigerians. Moving forward, I wonder how it is that any government can build on that, you know, building on that enthusiasm. It's very sad that it's just one day in a year it happens. I, I wonder if it can, you, you think it's something that can be sustained month long? No, not just month. Again, it borders on attitude, values. Nigerians have come with this perception that if you are not rich, nobody listens to you. Values. I, uh, some time ago, you know, there was um, in the 80s, we had this issue of uh, obtaining by false pretenses, normally called 419. You see a child and say, 
What are you going to do? I will do 419. Even now, you will say, I will do kidnapping. There are values. So we need to change our attitude on values. You have 50 cars. What are you doing with it? You don't need it. And it's because we have no fear of God. If you, basic things, if you have your accommodation, you have food to eat, you have clothing, what else are you looking for? You go and buy houses in London. You buy in Dubai. You don't go there once, maybe once a year or in two years. It's wasting. Why not invest that money? The money is stolen. If the money is stolen and investing in our economy, I don't have a problem with that. But when people steal money and they go outside to invest such money, where you are not getting returns, I don't want to measure a company. They called me and they say, took me to Dubai for me to buy a, a, an accommodation. I said, how much? They said, between $450,000 to $700,000. In the first place, I don't have that kind of money. I told them, I said, listen, hold it. If I take $450,000 and invest in Nigeria, I, 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 know, I know where I should be. Mm. So there's also a message for the elites as well. Exactly. Exactly. We should change our attitude. This blind acquisition of wealth, has it stopped? Even now, under this government that we're fighting corruption, it hasn't stopped because it's part of our system. So we need to, we need to change our attitude too. When you talk of change, 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 the change starts with, with, with you and with me. Mm -hmm. You know why I laugh? Because, you know, when government came out with that, people said, no, you did not tell us that it was going to start with us. You said you were going to bring change. You know, so no, different but, but when you're talking of, of change, yes. and you are doing directly a direct opposite of what you are preaching, how, how do you expect a change? You don't expect change. Change starts with our processes. Appointments, be fair to all. Distribution of wealth. Be fair to, be just to all, and we have less problem. Well, I sincerely hope that we have less problems. Do you have any uh, final words then for Nigerians, even as we enter this 57th year? I mean, well, I think we're entering the 58th 58th year. year now. Yes. So, mm -hmm. what do, are you hoping would happen, you know, with the people in, in the 58th year of, in, of independence? I believe that Nigeria is going to be great. It's something you believe? I believe it. With cooperation and change of attitude, like I said, of our people. We must be honest in our dealings with our fellow human beings. This ethnic tension is not necessary. We must all live together as Nigerians. I have never gone out of this country and uh, I get to the airport, they say, bring your passport. And they say, you are from South South or from your Delta. My passport reads Nigeria. And I'm a Nigerian. I believe in the Nigerian project. So we must do everything to sustain the unity of this country. Mm. It's not left for Michael Jafar or Maupe. It's everybody. Well, Mr. Jafar, we have to thank you most kindly for coming to at least shed some light, you know, on what is happening right now, especially as Nigeria clocks are 57 and it's now in the 58th year, the first yeah. day of the 58th year. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for thank speaking you. to us this morning. Uh, Mr. Mikey Jafar is a former director with the State Security Services. Sunrise Daily will take a moment now and we'll be back shortly. Please stay with us.